All right, let's get right into it. Your assigned problems may or may not have different randomized values. For best results, attempt the assignment on your own before watching these solutions. Students are encouraged to frequently pause the video to work out steps on their own before proceeding with the solutions. And here's the list of topics to be covered in this video. In problem one, we're asked to match the given function y is equal to one over x minus two plus five with its graph. And we have these options here. So we need to determine which one matches the function one over x minus two plus five. The first thing I'd like to do is rewrite it as a single fraction. Things are always a little easier to work with in that way. So we give the term five, the common denominator of x minus two. This will simplify now as five x minus nine over x minus two. We determine now that the function has a root at x equals nine over five, which is just a little bit less than two. This first graph here, we can see its root is a little bit bigger than two, so that one's out. This graph does not have a root at all that we can determine. In this graph here, the root is just a little bit larger than two as well. Also, this function should have a vertical asymptote at x equals two. That's still consistent with the only remaining option. And it should have a horizontal asymptote at y equals five because we have a rational function, numerator and denominator are same degree, the ratio of leading coefficients is five. And again, the function that remains appears to have a horizontal asymptote at y equals five. In problem two, much like problem one, we're given a rational function and we have to determine which of these four graphs is the graph of that function, x plus three times x minus one over x plus five times x minus two. The first thing I notice is that the numerator and therefore this fraction overall will be zero if x is equal to negative three. So looking at the graphs, we see that the graph in the lower left does not have a root at x equals negative three, so it's out. Also the graph in the lower right does not have a root at x equals negative three. Well, what other roots does this function have? At x equals one, however, both graphs that remain have roots at both x equals negative three and x equals one, so that doesn't help us yet. We're looking for a vertical asymptote, a zero of the denominator at x equals negative five, but both remaining graphs appear to have that. Similarly, there's a vertical asymptote at x equals two, and both graphs that remain appear to have vertical asymptotes at x equal two. We can see, however, that f of x is a rational function. The degree of the numerator will be two, the degree of the denominator will be two, and both will have leading coefficient one, which means the function has a horizontal asymptote at y equals one. The remaining graph on the right looks like it has a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative one, that's out. Therefore, the graph is the one in the upper left. In problem three, just as before, we have f of x is equal to two times x minus one over x plus two, and we have to determine which of these is the graph of that function. Well, we're looking for a root at x equals one, so scanning through here and trying to determine if any of them do not have roots at x equals one, it's actually all of them except for one of them, so that information alone really helps us narrow it down. But let's just check some other things to make sure that we're correct. We're looking for a vertical asymptote, a root of the denominator at x equals negative two, and that matches. And we're also looking for a horizontal asymptote at y equals two. The numerator and denominator of the fraction both have leading coefficient one, but it is being multiplied by a two overall. So the horizontal asymptote of y equals two still seems to match the one remaining graph. So we're pretty confident that that is correct. In problem four, we wanna match the function to the only possible graph. We have four functions here and we have four graphs, but notice basically nothing is labeled. So we're gonna to have to determine what's what, not exactly by pulling out what the roots are and what the vertical asymptotes are, but rather which of them are crossing versus not. So in option capital A, x equals a is a root of the numerator, but it's of degree two. So it has a single root that is not crossing. Its denominator is of degree one, so it has a single asymptote that is crossing. So now what we're looking for is out of the four graphs, which of them has a root where the function does not cross and has a vertical asymptote where the sign does change on either side. And it's this one right here in the upper left. In part B, we're looking for a non-crossing root, but then we're also looking for a non-crossing vertical asymptote. Both the numerator and denominator have roots of degree two. And the only option here is in the bottom right that has a root where the graph does not cross and it also has a vertical asymptote with the same sign on both sides. For C, we're looking for the root and the asymptote to be crossing as they both have multiplicity one. That's option C in the upper right here. We have a single root where the graph does change from negative to positive and a single vertical asymptote where the sign does change from positive to negative from one side to the other. Finally, option D, we have a crossing root. The numerator has a root of multiplicity one 
and a non-crossing vertical asymptote. The denominator has a root of multiplicity two. That does match the only remaining graph, a single root where we cross, and a single vertical asymptote with the same sign on both sides. For problem five, we're given a graph and we're asked to determine a possible equation. So we do see that there is a crossing root at x equals three. So the numerator must have a factor of x minus three raised to an odd power so that the odd multiplicity turns that into a crossing root. Let's just make it as simple as possible by raising it to the first power. There are two vertical asymptotes marked at x equals negative two and x equals four. So the denominator must have factors of x plus two and x minus four. Both asymptotes change sign from positive to negative on one side to the other, so those must be to odd powers as well. Let's just put them to the first power. So far what we have is a numerator of x minus 3 and a denominator of x plus 2 times x minus 4. Our candidate function at this point is x minus 3 over x plus 2 times x minus 4. Is there any other information given that we can check to see whether we're correct or not? Well, there's a y-intercept at 0 comma negative 2 that appears to go right through that point. So our function right now would not have that y-intercept. We don't want to change too much about this function, so we can multiply by a constant that won't affect the roots of the numerator or denominator. In other words, it won't affect the roots or vertical asymptotes of the function. So let's multiply by a constant. We'll call it capital A. Now f of 0 as marked right now, will be 3 over 8 times a. We'll have minus 3 in the numerator and minus 8 in the denominator. We want, however, f of 0 to equal negative 2 so that we get the correct y-intercept. So we set a equal to negative 16 over 3, and that will give the correct result. So putting negative 16 in the numerator and 3 in the denominator, in other words, our constant was negative 16 over 3, here's our candidate function. Is there any other information that we can check? Now there might be a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero. It's not explicitly marked and there's not a whole lot of information about it, but it looks consistent. Now right now our function, the numerator has degree one and the denominator has degree two, which means that it would have a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero, so that appears to check out. So right now we've got f of x is negative 16 times x minus 3 over 3 times x plus 2 times x minus 4. We have all the correct roots, whether they're crossing or not, all of the correct vertical asymptotes, whether they're crossing or not. We have the correct y-intercept, and we have a plausible horizontal asymptote as well. Is there anything else we can check about this function? Now, assuming that the horizontal asymptote really is y equals 0, the graph appears to approach that value from below on the right and from above on the left. So let's check very, very large positive values of x. If x is very enormous and positive, all factors x minus 3, x plus 2, and x minus 4 would all be positive. And therefore our function overall would be negative because its numerator has that minus 16 in it. So overall, when x is extremely large and positive, the function will be producing negative numbers. So that does check out approaching zero from below from the negative side. So our function appears to be pretty good as is. Let's just keep it like that. We have a pretty good function that probably would produce a graph very much, if not exactly, like this. For problem six, just as in the previous problem, we're given a graph and we want to write an equation for the function graph. So we see a crossing root at x equals two. So the numerator should have x minus two to an odd power. Our first attempt will be to raise it to the smallest odd power we can, raise it to the first. We see a crossing vertical asymptote at x equals minus one. So the denominator should have a factor of x plus one to an odd power. And there's a non-crossing vertical asymptote at x equals four. So we have a factor of x minus four, but raised to an even power. So let's try the denominator being x plus one times x minus four squared. So far our function looks like f of x equals x minus two over x plus one times x minus four squared. There are no other labeled points, and we don't want to start making guesses anywhere, so let's just check if what we have is consistent with any other information. There does appear to be a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero, and our function does have a denominator of larger degree than the numerator, so that's good. We can check one more thing. For very, very large values of x, every term will be positive which means that f of x will be positive for very large values of x. And with a horizontal asymptote of y equals zero, we can still distinguish positive versus negative. And for large x values, our function appears to be approaching that asymptote from above. In other words, positive numbers, so that's good. 
So everything looks all right as written, so we can leave it like this. Now, back when we said there was no labeled y-intercept, it appears to be sort of at negative one half, but it's not exactly labeled, and if it's not a labeled point with a fraction in it, I'm gonna presume we don't have to match that information. If you did have to match the y-intercept of minus one half, you could do so by multiplying by the appropriate constant. Now in problem seven, we're asked the same sort of thing, find an equation for the function graph below, but we are explicitly told the y-intercept is at zero comma minus one half. Now looking at the graph, it doesn't really appear to be at exactly minus one half. This is why I said in the previous problem that when the points are not exactly at integers, it's generally safe to not assume you can tell the difference unless you're given the point specifically. So in this problem, we are specifically told where the y-intercept is. So let's look at integer points we can spot. There's a non-crossing root at x equals one, so the numerator has to have x minus one to an even power. We'll put in x minus one squared to keep things as simple as we can. There's a crossing vertical asymptote at x equals minus one and a non-crossing vertical asymptote at x equals two. Notice at x equals two, the function does the same thing on both sides. That's what I mean by a non-crossing asymptote. So the denominator must have a factor of x plus one to an odd power, we'll just use to the first power, and it must have x minus two to an even power, we'll just use x minus two squared. So at this point, our candidate function has x minus one squared in the numerator and x plus one times x minus two squared in the denominator. The horizontal asymptote of the graph at y equals zero matches the fact that our denominator has larger degree than our numerator. So to match the intercept, which we were explicitly told is at zero comma negative one half, we can multiply by a constant and that won't change any of the roots and it won't change any of the vertical asymptotes and it doesn't change the multiplicity of anything. So, so far we know that the function should be some constant times x minus one squared over x plus one times x minus two squared. All we need to do is find a value for that constant so that we get out the correct intercept. F of zero, if you simply plug in x equals zero, you'll get a positive one in the numerator and a positive four in the denominator. So F of zero is A over four, but we want F of zero to be negative one half. So we're simply gonna set A to be equal to negative two. Therefore, f of x equals negative two times x minus one squared over x plus one times x minus two squared. We'll have all the correct roots and vertical asymptotes with multiplicities that are consistent with what we see. It has the correct horizontal asymptote and it matches the intercept we were explicitly told to find. We can check end behavior just to be safe. For very, very large values of x, every factor up there is positive. And our graph is negative, so multiplying by a negative a does make sense, that's also consistent. That's just kind of a last minute check. Problem eight is remarkably straightforward. We're given two different graphs of the function f of x equals two x over x plus three. On one of them, we are asked, draw the horizontal asymptote and write its equation. On the other, draw the vertical asymptote and write its equation. So since the function is a rational function whose numerator and denominator are both of the same degree, to find the horizontal asymptote, we simply take the ratio of leading coefficients, two over one, so y equals two, and there it is. For the vertical asymptote, we simply need to find a root of the denominator, it's x equals minus three, and there that is. There's really not much to this problem. In the final problem of this assignment, we are asked to draw a graph of f of x equals x plus four over x minus two by placing the horizontal and vertical asymptotes and then finding one additional point. So because we have a rational function, numerator and denominator have the same degree, we find the horizontal asymptote as a ratio of leading coefficients. So y equals one over one or just one. So here's our horizontal asymptote, y equals one. To find the vertical asymptote, we find a root of the denominator, x equals two, there that is. The y-intercept of all the points we could find is probably the easiest, so simply plugging in x equals zero will produce y equals minus two, so there's that point right there. The x-intercept is quite easy to find, it's x equals negative four, so even though we were not explicitly told to find more than one point, it's very quick and it will help us draw a better picture. So here's a sort of reasonable picture for a rational function half with the given vertical asymptote, horizontal asymptote, and two points that we found. Now, functions of the form ax plus b over cx plus d, in other words, a rational function that's one linear term over another, where they're not multiples of each other, so you don't have some sort of hole in the graph, 
They're not necessarily odd functions, but they are odd around the intersection of their horizontal and vertical asymptotes. In other words, if you pretend that the horizontal and vertical asymptotes are your actual coordinate axes, then the function will look odd there. So having a decent picture of one side, we're just going to reflect it around as if it was odd on that point, and there's the other half of our function.